right, ladies and gentlemen, that, my friends, or those, are arpeggios. Woo! That's a big word. <laughs> but all it means is the notes of a chord played separately. So in this particular run, we only have two shapes we have to worry about, a major shape and a minor shape. Now, the way we're going to do it, and I'll show you them both in A. Now the way, if you want to use this trick or this, this lick idea or style in any song, all you need to know are the two shapes of the chords. Now to find the chords where you would play the arpeggios, we're going to pull them out of these six string versions of the major or minor bar chords, the E shaped versions of them, okay? So all six strings, A major, now all you have to do is you have to find your root note on the high E string and then you bar the E and the B string. Okay, so this is gonna be our A major shape. Now from this point, you need to go up two whole steps. So you need to go up to the seventh fret and then keep going up to the ninth fret. Now it's a big stretch, right? And I don't have hands like Hendrix does. So to me, that's, that's you know, kind of pushing it but it's not that hard once you get the hang of it. So what you want to do is you want to keep this finger again barred so when you pull off your note is still ringing or it still has sustain to it. Okay, and it gets a nice ring to it. Now that would be an example of a major arpeggio. To do a minor, all we have to do is take that same shape, and again, this is gonna be an A minor arpeggio, and drop it down a half step. So it's gonna be a whole step and a half step, or a step and a half, and that would sound like this. Right, and it goes over what a minor shape would sound like. Okay, so now all we have to do is knowing the chords in our progression to this song, we just need to find where those chords are in that E shape version of them are on the neck and then we'll be able to find all, the, all of the arpeggios. So, A, we obviously know it's a major chord and that one's going to be at the 5th fret and the ninth fret. So you're pulling off from 9 to 5 and then barring and going to be on the 5th fret of the B. Then I'm going to take that while it's still ringing and go all the way up to the 12th fret where my E major chord is. Now you can do it down here and use open strings. Totally will work too. Sounds great. I just shifted up to this higher position. So. So far, so good. We've got two major shapes. Now we're coming on to our next chord, which is a minor chord, and it's located up. Again, you know, use this version, or we're at E, so we need to go to F sharp, so scoot it up. It's going to be F sharp minor. So now we have a position, or not a position, but a shape change. Okay, so we're doing four times a piece. One, two, Slide one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now we need to go down to D, which is right here at the tenth fret, back to our major shape. Okay, now from there, our progression starts over, but this is where we go F sharp minor to G instead of the D. So we're gonna go same up to the E. sharp minor, half step up to G major. Now that you know the chords in the progression, you know, you could do that second part where it goes back and forth to B minor to D as well and go through the whole song and practice it. It's kind of tough. If you want to keep it sustaining, that's where it's really tricky, right? So you're doing and you keep the notes ringing. It's a little bit trickier. 
and then to get all the way up here and then get that correct shape, it can be a bit of a challenge. So do it slow, I mean. What I try to do is as soon as I pull off on the last time I spot where the first finger is going and when I know it's getting close then I try to spot where the other finger is going to be because it's really easy to you know hit one of these other notes or intervals and it just you know it won't sound right <laughs> but therein lies the challenge and we're up to it and we're trying things to get better and at least come like a hundredth of the way of the awesomeness that Hendrix had. And there's just so many good riffs. And, th and this is one of the, you know, I can't think of many other times when he used this particular riff, but it's such a cool, and at this particular part in the song when he uses it, it's such a cool thing. And it's, and it's awesome that there's something that's soothing and really nice about repetitive riffs like that where it's kind of one shape and it goes all the way through the progression just using the same kind of thing so super fun riff a little bit more on the challenging side to getting again getting the notes ringing getting them clear and getting the interval spacings right on time so i suggest doing it slow without the backing track first get the shapes memorized where the chords are and where the arpeggios need to be and then try it along with the track. <laughs> 